Hey everyone, welcome to the, the final practitioner call. Um, we are blessed with Susan Lucci's leadership today. Uh, she is a, well, among many things, a, a circling uh, devotee, practitioner, leader, and we're going to learn about her work and, and how that essentially over interlaps, over, overlaps, interplays with, with purpose stuff. And also, um, Susan, if, if you'd be open to just kind of get, just giving us a little biographical dive into, you know, how you came into and purpose and the circling and just let us know, like, why this is important to you and why, why you do this. All yours. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Welcome. Um, somebody's on the phone with us. Is that Tamara? It's Holly. Oh, hey, Holly. How are you? I'm good, Susan. How are you? Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Okay. So um, we were just checking in a little bit about circle experiences. And I, I did not have any circle experience um, before I found myself um, deeply called to this work and, and really hungry for um, circle. And living in Chicago, it wasn't like there were people that even had a clue what I was talking about. Um, and, and my experience prior to this, I was a lawyer for years, so have certainly been to lots of meetings. Um, I have been a community activist and um, held lots of meetings, um, done fundraising, uh, worked in the Obama campaign. Um, so lots of meetings and kind of um, facilitated group events that I just never found great. And so about 10 years ago, when I really just started craving a deeper dialogue, um, it, it came to me, um, it's a much longer story than we have time for today, but that the circle was the thing. And uh, started doing some research and just learning everything I could about it. And mostly how I've learned how to do circle is by being in circle. And so at this point I've done, oh gosh, I think I'm pushing 600 circles that I have facilitated. Um, it's my just very favorite place to be. I consider it a social art form that we first came together, you know, 50,000 years ago as a species. And I so heartily um, believe in this model that I think it is our way forward. And so that's why as I was preparing and to present this to you, just feeling really compelled to invite you into this. You've been in circles, but I would love you to leave today with some courage and some clarification on, you know, how could I hold a circle for myself? You know, a group of people around me, how could I begin to facilitate? Um, I have held circles with all kinds of folks, um, lots with teenage girls. Um, very powerful form there, sitting on the floor every Friday afternoon and digging in deep to the issues that confront teenage girls. Um, and mostly my work now is with middle-aged women who are at transition and um, want a, a mindful, purposeful place to decide what they want to do next. And I have found this um, social art form to be just utterly transformative for that. And a lot of it in, in women's work is actually healing women's relationships because historically, you know, we have not been so great in the last 50 years, um, especially at celebrating and holding each other up. Um, and reflecting what's good and true and possible. Um, so that is a particular niche that, um, that I am working with right now and just uh, absolutely enjoy it. But I've also done it in my activism, in my community. We have a, a vibrant uh, sustainability. Um, well, it's bigger than, a, it's a whole community here. And so I've done a fair amount of circling with them in different formats, um, really taking like a, a book group discussion of Joanne Macy's book and taking it up a notch by bringing circle to it. Um, using kind of like the World Cafe model um, to uh, pollinate different subsets within the sustainability group over a year-long process. So um, there are lots of different ways I have experienced and found Circle, and, and you have named some of them. I'm sure you've experienced them yourself. But I find um, it's a field that is so ripe right now that the, the we space, the collective consciousness, um, is so willing to to come in and um, renew restore and and uh, give some wisdom you know so um, I'd like to see if we can't even tap into it today and I think the best way to share the um, the elements of the way I circle is to really just open up a circle with us and there are there are six of us here um, fortunately uh, Rick and Tamar are on and we have been part of a 
um, a global purpose leader circle that we've been holding since April. And so I'm excited um, towards the end of this to announce our offering coming from, uh, from this, which we hope the, a lot of the global purpose leaders would like to uh, commit to with us. Um, and so it's great too to have people that have practiced a model together and, and can really uh, deepen into the field. Um, great. So what I would invite you to do, um, and I'm starting the environment, right, is so important. So um, 10 minutes ago, of course, they're cutting the grass. I live across from a, a university. And of course, there came the lawnmowers. I was like, of course, when I went to set the environment for circle, here we go. But just notice for you, I know Brandon is hot and sweaty there. That is a distraction in and of itself. But is there something around you that just needs to be turned off, a door closed, uh, because your presence um, is invited? Like the game we played as kids, you know, come put your whole self in. So uh, I think the benefit of the circles I, I do in person is that we turn off our phones, we shut the door, and we really sit literally in circle with each other. So in a virtual circle, we're gonna try to, um, to emulate that. And so that you can really begin to tune in to yourself and your own presence. And it is great to come in, how do I feel? Am I hot, am I cold, am I hungry, am I tired? <clears throat> it's Friday before a long weekend. So just really take a couple of breaths. And once we breathe together, we begin to be co-conspirators, which literally means breathing together. And so I've already uh, lit a candle for us here, and I'm just going to bring a chime. Um, you'd be thinking about your own rituals, how you like to mark sacred space. And if you have something there that you'd like to, um, to join me in a candle, <clears throat> Anything else that might help? So one of the, the wonderful things about Circle is that the, the six of us will likely never be together again. Um, this moment is so precious and uh, to hold it that way, that we can really um, kind of look into each other's eyes, and Holly will, will imagine your beautiful blues here, um, just really take in each other's presence, that we have made space and time for each other. And it's kind of overused, but our presence is such a powerful gift, especially in this era when we are so much on technology and so frequently multitasking. So I just want to start with some gratitude for each of you for being here. And I'm going to start with a poem from Starhawk. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us. Whenever we come into our own power, community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. And so as we set our, our own circle container here, I invite you to invite in your own guides. We each have guides with us, our own entelechy, our sacred guides, source. And go ahead and invite in however you, um, you relate to your guides. We can widen the circle. And I'd also like to invite, because we are part of a, a global purpose leaders group and movement. And so this is bigger even than the six of us and bigger than us and our guides. So to really invite in all the way back to the greats, the great purpose guides of the past, anyone who's inspired you, who we've learned from, been guided by, inspired by, 
And I invite all of that energy in, all of that presence. The intersecting point for each of us is around purpose. So this field of purpose that is now collecting and collaborating and moving through each of us and all of us. And just keep tuning into that. If you need to use your breath, um, how you're sitting in your chair to really feel into your own presence and then also at the same time to tune into this group, this we space that we are now creating. And I invite each of your voices in. Um, intention is a, a very powerful part of setting the container of circle. And my intention today is to hopefully spark something within you to think about how can you create a circle? Who could you be with? What would conversation would you stir up? So my intention here today is to be present and to inspire you to create more of this field. And I invite each of you to, um, I'll just say your name and then you can weigh in what your intention is. It can be a word, it can be a phrase, it can be for these moments together, it can be for the whole weekend or the whole year. Um, intention is uh, just a beautiful way, I think, of, of focusing your energy. Or as Mary Morrissey says, you know, your choices shape your life. You're the artist. Your life is the canvas, and intention is your paintbrush. So, Brandon, can you be willing to speak your intention today? Yeah. Um, so, my intentions are... One is to absorb and learn about the power of your experience, Susan. And there is a, um, my, I think my deeper work in the world is around blessing. And I'm so excited by what you and Tamar and Rick are about to offer us at some point that like, I, w I want to be in, a, a circle of people who I can bless and be blessed by. That's my, my intention, my, like, like my little boy's deepest, <laughs> deepest need and, and wish is around blessing. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Rick, I invite in your intention. Thanks, Susan. There were two things that, came into my awareness when you asked that. And, and one was really just uh, an, an intention to be here for the rest of you, to be here in a clear way, in a way where, you know, little distractions in me aren't in the way for that, but just to really hold and see and be in whatever way is needed, um, like clear somehow. Um, and the second intention is I was kind of listening. So I, something I'm actively moving towards and wanting more in my life right now is more connection. And for me, circle feels a lot about connection. So I'm, as we're going today, I'm kind of keeping my uh, antenna up for noticing ways that I might want that, that I haven't been aware of yet. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dustin, do you have an intention for today? Yes, and thank you for the question. And uh, two things struck me when you brought that up. And the first was um, to be sparked. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, was real right for me, just to be sparked an idea, you know, and uh, to learn, learn more about your intention, your circle influence. And but I think to be sparked really was resonant with me. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you, welcome. Tamar. What I'm most aware of is um, uh, a response to the field and to this deep pool of presence, and it just awakens in me a hunger to step more deeply into that. 
in this particular moment, this opportunity, like take advantage of this opportunity to be in this field of deep presence. And along with that, a receptivity and openness to just allow whatever hints or seeds or flickers of something new that wants to emerge through the uh, connections that are happening here right now amongst the six of us and spreading out wider into the larger field that we're all part of. So I just have that sense that there's something living that wants us to be um, open to receive or to be a channel for it. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Tamar. Holly, do you have an intention for us today? I do, sorry I was on mute. <laughs> um, and I apologize about being on phone, I couldn't find the Zoom link, <laughs> but I'm here. Um, I am intending to be more connected to you all, have felt a bit distant um, in the recent past to do some, some of my own personal uh, life uh, happenings and i um, glad to be connected, I um, really, adore this space and want to have um, allow whatever is here to emerge, as Tamar said. Um, I also am ready to be re-inspired by you, Susan, and your, um, your heroic efforts at creating beautiful, loving circle. Um, it's something I really want to do, and, and it keeps coming onto my plate and then disappearing and I'm, I'm actually looking to be re-inspired and uh, make it happen. So thank you for creating this opportunity. Mm, beautiful. Great. Thank you. Mm. And now, um, this is beautiful. We, we are, to me, I feel really that we are in this heart space, individually and collective. Um, in circle, often I will use um, a bigger space right now to offer a meditation or even just some silence, right? But we have had some pauses between us. I think we've all slowed down the way we're speaking, right? So these are some things that I sense into um, until we get to that kind of a still point, right? So um, if we had all afternoon, you know, I might even have us hold 10 or 15 minutes of silence. You know, there are some beautiful thresholds when you sit with people, you can get past seven minutes. Um, but for today, I'm gonna go right into our into our shared agreements. And thank you for those intentions. If you um, one of the ways that, that I often imagine circle is as a, a deep pool of water, you know, that we come and, and yeah, you could sit on the edge and dip your toe in, or you can go as deep as you want. And I just imagine each of us just kind of sitting down at the edge, putting our intentions in, and you can kind of feel that the ripple and then the, the mixing together, right? The resonance, uh, among us. And in this space, um, one of the things I think sorely missing in conversation in 2017 in America is civility. And so I think it's really important to name what our shared agreements are. And, and again, with a group, I would take some time that we would form them together. And today I'm going to offer them to you as shared agreements that, that Rick and Tamar and I, along with Cynthia, have formed um, in, in the place that we've been creating in, in the global purpose movement. So again, these can be up for discussion at some point in the future, but for today, we commit to be fully present in this space and at this time. We agree to speak our authentic truth. And we agree to speak one at a time, that we are not going to talk over each other just as we went person by person with intention. Really powerful. So speaking is part of circle for sure, but listening is even more powerful. So listening to the, the group, the person who's speaking, and, and to yourself. And so the listening happens at many levels too, right? What is said and also what is sensed. And as it has been named an intention, what also wants to emerge. So in circles, especially among um, people that are awake and very intentional, I find there is this edginess to circle that we can begin to sense into that is um, a stretch from your comfort zone. So um, see if you can't play with that yourself, you know, and it is a part of turning off the distractions, that can be just a big piece of it. But also just see if you can't tune into what wants to emerge through you. 
And our, our emphasis was really on that moment, you know, this special moment, I named it as precious, that the six of us will likely never have a conversation again unless we're really intentional and plan. And so this space here that we want to, to honor this and be grateful for that. So we have um, an agreement of confidentiality, which is a little odd right now because we're being recorded. So hello to people that are listening uh, to this and each of us are being uh, courageously vulnerable in sharing our intention and this space with you. And we do it with an intention to, it, to invite and draw you in in hopes that you'll join us in person in the future. So does anybody have anything else that they would like to add that would make this place feel sacred or safe enough? Brandon? Um, uh, agreement I really like is just safety. Uh, that if, if for whatever reason you feel unsafe or you feel like something unsafe or unclean is happening, to, to say safety. The word safe thing will stop and see what's happening. And um, something I learned in MKP circles is sometimes there's physical safety because we do a lot of physical processes, but um, sometimes there's emotional safety where you see like a man shaking or, you know, and you know, that's just something I would offer too is around safety. Okay, interesting. And for each of us, I think that is um, probably subject to a little different interpretation, right? Um, it, for some, I named the recording piece, that might be the edge of it as like, ooh, I'm not going to say so much, right? Um, given our um, succinct time, and always in circle, you have a, a container, a, a parameter of time. So speaking succinctly and essential um, is really a critical piece of this too, to honor that. And it's a practice. All of these I have found are practices. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert in circle. I'm still a practitioner of it. And I've just learned through this. Um, but for us to really savor this space today and several, um, several interesting needs were, were named, I heard in the intention. Um, and I wondered if we, if we might have a little conversation around that to be, um, this is a, it can be such a restorative space. So what would, what would you need if you could name a need? Uh, right now from fellow purpose leaders, you know, from wise ones, uh, the collective field. Think about that. What is, what is something that, that you need? And in the framework of like deep desire, we heard that in, in Brandon a little bit of that. He even went to that little boy in him, right? That need to, to be blessed and to offer a blessing, right? So just tune into yourself and in this moment, um, speaking from your heart space, is there a need that you would like to, to really put into this space? So maybe just re you know, raise your hand, um, and Holly, if you want to cough or something, I'll see that you are ready to speak. Um, in Circle, we have, I use a stone, um, an obsidian stone, but uh, obviously there's talking sticks, different things in a virtual space. We find our way with that. Sometimes I'll follow alphabetically. Um, today I'll just try to, to read your body language if you have something that you want to offer. Brandon? Uh, there's... Um I guess if I could leave this circle feeling anything, it would be a feeling of connection slash initiation slash kind of like joining together for something. Like I, I, I just I feel the desire to kind of collectively merge into something. Mm -hmm. I don't have a short word for that. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and thanks for saying it like that and naming that because what I find in circle is the more authentic and present we can be, it doesn't make sense, right? It was, oh, that doesn't make sense. What am I even saying and naming? And that to me is always a sign if somebody's wrestling with that, I'm like, cool, you know, you're speaking right from the edge. So thanks for that, um, taking that stretch into there. Uh, Tamar. Thank you for saying that, Brandon, because that really awoke something in me, um, which is, a, a very ever-present need um, to be in a really committed group 
by which I mean not necessarily committed to always meet together or committed to each other individually, but committed to a joint purpose, committed to something so important, committed to really make what is calling us from inside be the center of our life. Mm. And to me, that is safety because I, I think I have not really felt safe to be, um, to embody that commitment because of the lack of support from others who have the same commitment. I never thought of it as safety before, but that's what's coming to me right now. Beautiful, thank you, Tamar. I hear a lot in that, yeah, beautiful. This is Holly, I'd go if no one else is. Please do. I need to go. Um, it's funny, Tamar, that you used the word safety because that's immediately what came to me as well. Um, and I'm not even sure I can articulate the parameters of that safety, but I, I, what I know is that part of the reason I have not participated in this group, you know, the Global Purpose Leaders Group more fully is because of a lack of safety. And um, there, are, there are things going on that make me feel unsafe, and I, I won't speak to them here. And I, you know, I think it is related to the collective um, intent that both you and Brandon named. And I don't think we've reached that yet. Um, I, I think there's a, a disparate um, intentionality within this group. There's, and we've not reached a collective intentionality. And without that, there are so many threads uh, in directions that, um, you know, it just feels unsafe to me. Thanks, Thank you for allowing me to express that. Yeah, thank you, Holly. Hmm. Rick or Dustin, anything that an, a need that you would like to uh, to name? And it it's interesting in circle. Um, there can be convergences at different places, like around safety right now. And so I always invite people to step back and, and you know because we were in the individual and also the collective. So feel free to take a breath back into your body and name your own personal need. Um, and I love, I love the weaving and the patterns that emerge when we're in this space together. Yeah, it was interesting to see what came up in me when you asked the question. And, and I realized this is something that Dustin, uh, that Brandon said sparked me, um, felt really good, but I realized, oh, there's some things for me about my caring and my commitment to some of the work I'm doing now that I would love to get to voice and have held in this particular circle. Mm. Beautiful. Is there, is there one thing right now, Rick, that you could, um, cause that's still like an intention. Is there something that, that we sure. could right now? Yeah. If now's appropriate, I would be happy to, I would look forward to it. Yeah, so when Brandon was just talking about blessing, uh, and you could see him light up when he talked about that, and that word has a lot of meaning for me as well. Um, but it just tapped me into the excitement of being with people who are up to similar things. Um, and it felt like it'd be wonderful just to talk about the things I'm really committed to right now and feel are on track with my own calling because at times like I'm starting some new programs and I have like small enrollments and the enrollments are perfect in terms of the people and they're each an affirmation, but it's, you know, it wasn't where my, where I was holding. So I, there's this part of me that just wants to say, this is true. Um, <clears throat> so um, yeah, I guess the things I just want to claim here is just that, you know, this absolute um, importance of people to behold their gifts and really know their, their brilliance uh, and, you know, that, that they are luminous <laughs> and that they, you know, that life 
changes through them and life grows through them and and that the divine um, they are the divine reaches through them in them um, so you know that that when that thing in us is strong that everything else um, finds an alignment for that and that any of the things that are challenging you know somehow get a context for that so so that particular thing and training practitioners in supporting that in their communities those people that are called to do that and supporting people one-on-one -on -one <laughs> with that and some of the work that I'm doing around nature's map right now it's like you know if I won that big lottery that just happened you know I would wouldn't change much <laughs> except for a few little uh, comfort details uh, so anyhow, I just want to have that held and to whatever degree you hear my truth in that, just to reflect back um, your own hearing of that and any, any belief in you that that touches. Mm, beautiful. And that is uh, such a powerful use of circle. I have found that reflecting. So um, if we could, and then I want to get to Dustin, but if we could just take a moment, if there was a word or phrase that you could reflect back to Rick about what you just heard, mm -hmm. him expressing his need and naming that, just really just tune in and see what you could offer, offer back. That sounds to me what, what Rick is asking for. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Rick, I was so deeply touched by your evocation of the beauty and power of the individual soul and its gifts, the luminous quality, the ability to be the avenue through which the divine works in the world and how life is changed through each of us. I was just practically moved to tears by your words. Thank you. Next. Beautiful. I would say, just to succinct, I would say behold brilliance. And just, oh, feels really powerful to me. Behold brilliance. I would add absolute truth. Mm. Thank you. And then, Rick, you, you just received this wonderful practice just to, to name a need and then receive this energy. Um, spoken and not, right? Remember the, the guides that we have invoked um, here as well, the presence. So um, you could be receiving all kinds of information. I invite you just to Thank you. breathe it in and receive. Thank you, everyone. Dustin, do you, um, do you have a need that you would like to name? I don't. Great, thank you. Good. So I, what I'd like to do is to spend the next few minutes kind of closing our circle so we still have time in our session today to, um, for feedback, for Q&A, and then to unveil um, the offering that Rick and Tamar and I want to make um, as well. And so uh, invite you again into your presence just to breathe in what has been named and what you're noticing now. So powerful just to to really feel and notice. And the, the um, beautiful needs that have been named here for connection, this joining together, a collective intentionality to behold and know our brilliance, the absolute truth and a deep desire for safety. And is there anything we hear in this field of group wisdom that could inform or answer, um, you know, offer a response to those named needs? So now I'm just inviting you really to tune into the edge of the, what I call the we space we're creating here together. And it could be an image, it could be a sense, it could be a word. Is there anything you can bring forward in response to these named needs? 
Susan, I just Holly, I'm getting a a vision of um, coordinates. The three, I think it's just three things that you just named. Um, they're like coordinates and parameters of a container that could potentially hold our intentions, our needs, our desires, our dreams. Um, you know, almost like the three legs of a, a step stool. Um, they're simple, they're profound, they're fundamental. Um, yeah, it's just Beautiful. occurring to me. Beautiful. Powerful image we can draw right into, right? Anybody else want to uh, augment that or name something else that they're noticing? For me, Susan, there's just three words and it's just, there's a need. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing it on two levels. One is the bigger need, you know, that those of us that are called to do this related work, it's for a reason. Um, there's a big need. Um, I think more than we know. And then the second is that there's a need here that as I've been, you know, even before Brandon like sparked this into creation that I had been talking with other practitioners doing related things and we were talking about this very need for a tribe to for those of us doing this to have community and support and you know since this I keep running into people and I'm hearing the same thing <laughs> so. mm -hmm. beautiful there's a need yeah yeah thanks for naming that Brandon um, the, the image that comes to mind uh, for me is a bunch of people crowded around a double dutch jump rope circle and um, the like how exciting it is when when they're actually inside and you get to see the artistry that, that gets done and, and also, like, I'm present to, like, the, the fear of trying to jump into the circle. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, this is going to go terribly wrong. <laughs> and that's what, <laughs> that's, and, 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 but, like, there's, like, there's anticipation. There's, like, a sense that, like, it can be done well, and you have to trust, and it's okay to make mistakes and all that. But, like, and then, you know present doing it wrong, looking foolish, all this stuff. So that's what that's what I'm seeing. Like this double dutch circle and like just some skilled people on the inside already like, you know, doing the patty cake stuff and, you know, switching spots and all that kind of and then the rest was like, ah, how again? I don't I I don't know. <laughs> so it it is it it really is a process. That's beautiful. A process of trusting and allowing, right? It, there there's a leap into this space, right? I hear I hear that even with that safety, and that's a beautiful a beautiful metaphor for it. Your your little child sure wants to play this weekend, Brandon. I hope you have something fun planned for him. <laughs> um, beautiful. So I'd like to just take a moment before I close our circle piece, just a moment of silence, and for you to. To come into there's a need and in the corner of the world that you uphold the fun about a virtual circle right is is imagine where each of us are and we uphold a corner of the sky there's a need where you are and can you just imagine a circle that you might facilitate that you might invite in how you can jump into the jump rope and just allow what wants to come just pose your version of that question and then I'm just going to be quiet and just really listen deeply.
Beautiful. And so to, to close circle today, I'd like to, from our heart space, just a, a word or phrase of gratitude. Um, I will begin and I'm so grateful that um, each of you jumped in to the circle to play today. Uh, I, I hear and know of lots of distractions pulling you in other ways and I'm so grateful for your vulnerability to name your needs. And I look forward to what we're gonna create together next. So Holly, name some gratitude that you might be feeling for anything at all. I'm grateful for the opportunity to hear intentions, needs, desires, dreams of all of you and to throw my own um, you know, star in the bucket um, and that it, we have a chance to commingle. Thank you all. Mm, thank you. Tamar. Mm. I'm just grateful for this, uh, another opportunity to be in intimate connection with another slice of this community and to hear and feel people's hearts. Thank you, Dustin. I'm grateful um, to be in this circle right now, this present moment, and very grateful for all of you living into being in service to humanity in your own way. Mm, powerful, thank you. Rick. Yeah, really grateful to be here for this hour with all of you. And I was also feel, am feeling grateful for different individuals here in the way that you've contributed over the past period of time. It feels like everyone's put something in here. Thank you. Brandon. Um, I am really grateful for these five expressions of elder energy that just mm -hmm. fill me up just to be with. Like, and don't take that the wrong way, but like, you know what I mean by that? The archetype. Um, and it's just, I'm so grateful for to be in, in the glow of, el of elders. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you. I'd like to close with a, um, a quote from David Bohm. It was as if we were acting together as agents to deliver important new knowledge into the world. Together, working from that place of deeper knowing, we can begin to address the major problems of our time. A core belief is that the necessary resources to solve our problems and create our futures are already present within us. The challenge is for us to work together to bring our individual and collective knowledge, intelligence, wisdom, creativity, and inner courage into play. So thank you for coming together. And, and I just um, will complete the ritual of um, ringing the chime. And then I blow out the candle. And then we're complete. And we'll move into our regular conversation. So um, just take a deep breath again, just to, to inhale from this field. And knowing that you can take what you need and, um, and give what you can here. Um, just relish. One more, one more sip. Mm. So beautiful. Thank you for playing. Um, the, um, the release of information, and then I'd love some feedback or questions from you all, is that um, Rick and Tamar and I would like to invite you and the other global purpose leaders into um, what for now we're calling the Well of Wisdom, Circling Round Purpose. And we're going to meet, um, since April, we've actually been meeting every other Wednesday um, regularly um, and have been playing in this collective field of specifically purpose and leaders in the purpose movement. And um, we now would like 
you to join us. So we have some dates and I'll send out an invitation, but um, what's been working for us are alternating Wednesday afternoons at one o'clock Pacific time. And so starting on September 13th, we'd like to invite this community in to join us. Um, and our intention really is to create a gathering place to nourish, renew, connect, and inspire global purpose leaders. And um, this was a taste of it, you know, with the same similar shared agreements. And I love what came forward today, um, I think would be some, of, some really great starting places. You know, what is the collective intentionality of this field? Um, you know, what can we put into action from there? Um, and, and the needs, and I hear that safety piece, I think will be important for us to form. And I think the timing is, is just ideal, thanks to Brandon for inviting me in, and I had to switch weeks with Marcy, and it just works out perfect, I think, that we um, land here and then move into circle. And then with the Purpose Summit in November, I think it would be so great to have this virtual circle space being held, and then to be together in person in November, I think would just be fabulous. And I think we'll, we'll play with it. We'll meet, we have some dates in September and October, and then we'll see uh, what the commitment is and how we want to take it forward. Um, Rick and Tamar and I will take turns facilitating, but we also invite others that are interested in doing that too. Um, we found some rich information in the diversity of leadership um, and infusing the circle space with poems and, and whatever um, we might want to bring. So. Um, I will put that on our Facebook page, and I just open it up for questions, comments, um, feedback on how that went, other questions you have about circle. If somebody wants to step into, I am going to call a circle, bring it. <laughs> Brandon, two hands up. My, everything can be expressed in this. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm so excited for this offering, and I, uh, I'm enthusiastic. Yes, just put it in my calendar. Um, so yeah, uh, really grateful for today and Susan to be able to experience this because I even shared it with us in a number of ways, and um, and it was great to actually experience it. And um, I, I look forward to. Uh, at some point, the the word expert being something you're comfortable with. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I feel that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. I, the, um, I think it'll be fun to, to, to be a, uh, a participant and uh, a student with all of you, really, but to participate and create the circle. Um, and I'm just so delighted that there was such a rich connection amongst uh, you three and, and Cynthia, which she was part of this. Um, and I'm really excited to experience the next couple months together. So, yay! <laughs> yay! Beautiful. Anybody else? A question, a comment? Just a comment. One is I want to acknowledge Cynthia. Uh, who were what was called the visionary roundtable? She was the one who like put her hat in to like get that started. Um, and just in the experience, so when the four of us were getting together regularly to try to, we we were in such like discovery mode. We're like, what the heck are we meeting about? <laughs> uh, but we realized, and it was a, kind of a surprise to me because I had no idea what we were doing or if this was something I should be a part of. But every time we left, we just felt so nourished and felt like there was something here that we just kept wanting to come back to. And so we ended up focusing on that. It's like, why do we keep wanting to come back? <laughs> Maybe that should give us some clues as to why we're meeting. <laughs> um, and as, that, as we did that, it really got to the point where it's like, oh, we want to invite other people into this because it feels so rich. So looking forward to more. And there is, there's so much you can do with circle. Um, my circles are two hours long, right? We just did that in about a half an hour. Um, it's fun to play with that, but I have, um, I insert a lot of teaching in mine. I have taught mindfulness practices. Um, now I'm doing purpose guiding through it. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's such an amazing field to play with, you know, with questions, I'll, I'll break up people into subgroups. And so if we have enough people participate, we might do some of that, you know, breaking up into smaller groups and having 
um, individual conversations and then coming back into the group. Um, there are practices that I'll do. There, there are so many fun things that you can use this container for. Um, and so I think that will be interesting to, to play in the purpose movement. How can this inform us individually? We've played with that a little bit, Rick and Tamar, the last time we played with just putting, putting a question in and then the wisdom and inspiration that came was powerful. Um, so I think we, we are still just touching our toe in this water and there's, there's so much uh, possibility. Tamara, did you have something you wanted to, to add? Well, just that um, I'm just very, I want to acknowledge you, Susan, because you are a master and I feel so grateful that I get to learn from you and participate. And that being said, all of our sessions were amazing. The presence that just arose spontaneously in the field among us just was there. And all of us were very you know, conscious and uh, present. But um, I'm now very excited at exploring more of the potential for my own work. I really hadn't Yay. thought of putting those together, so I may want to talk to you about that, Susan, when we get a chance. I'm really excited. Oh, that's awesome. It, and I started with Circle, and I had um, a group of guinea pigs, you know, 13 women that came together after I had this speaker at my house. Um, my husband was out of a job looking at me like, go back to the law firm. And it was crazy that I created Circle, and everybody was like, what is it? Um, but it is, and now I do individual coaching as a supplement to that. And I know a lot of you do kind of individual one-on-one -on -one, and it, it's the two together is just, oh my gosh. So the energy is fabulous. And especially I like to do a circle of eight people and um, we'll meet for a season. Like I'll, I'll start next week and we'll meet from September to, to December. I kind of do these school sessions because I deal with a lot of parents that have kids in school and then they'll each schedule a one-on-one -on -one deep dive with me and it that that package together is just I love it it's just priceless so you know just kind of look around who who do I want to bring together um, I think this field is very exciting for me because it's a group of people that are doing the work um, right that that are putting this uh, our calling as the center of our life so that to me is is really edgy and really exciting Great. So we just have a couple minutes left. Anybody um, want to add anything else? Dustin? Yeah, I just um, really want to express my gratitude for the invitation. Um, and I will be there. Um, I, I will miss the second one, however, because I'm holding a intensive on cultivating soul through purpose and vision. That's a five day intensive and it starts on a Wednesday, the 27th. So um, but thank you for that invitation. It feels really rich. I'm honored that, that I'm invited. So, and the other thing is I really, um, want to express my gratitude to Brandon for bringing us all together. This has been really rich for me personally to be around other practitioners around purpose. Mm -hmm. And as we go on, I'm really uh, excited to explore um, that common intention that we can create around purpose. Mm. Yeah. So thank well you. Said. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, beautiful. Yay! Our first signer upper. <laughs> Brandon said yay too. So this is great. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I think, um, you know, that piece of what are we inviting people into will be, um, we'll play with that too. But I think that would be great if you could come to most of them, we know we're kind of putting this day and time out there. We'll play with that and see where it goes, but um, great. So um, Rick. Yeah. I know we're at the end of our time. Just one thing to add related to the upcoming ongoing circle is just that one of the parts of the vision of it is the combination of that holding space and the, you know, touching into that, but also the practical, also support for each other, also being able to come and say, I'd lo I've loved some brainstorming today, or I want to get your guys' feedback on this, or I'm looking for a connection. So, I mean, something where we feel like we're actively supporting each other in our individual things, and that, that's part of what gets to come out of the circle. So, Yeah, thanks for saying that. We, um, we danced around and discussed a lot of that. Is this a place for being or doing? Because we all want to do as well. And it's, it was such a juicy place of being. And so we have been playing with that. It's so exciting to bring our, 
our individual and sometimes to celebrate, right? To celebrate what we're doing in the world. Um, and then sometimes to get some additional guidance. I, I posed the question, what's next? What's my best next step last time? And whew, just fabulous um, ideas and inspiration came. So all kinds of possibilities to play with. Holly, do you, do you have anything else you want to add? I can't see your beautiful face. You know, I actually was going to ask what, uh, just for more clarity about the intention of the circle. And I, I mean, you, you and Rick both um, shared a little bit, but I also hear some different, different interpretations. So if in the information you share publicly with the whole group, I would, you know, if as clear as you can be, okay. um, because I'm, if there's, I'm a little fuzzy about whether this is a circle or whether it's more of a mastermind. Um, because what Rick said felt like a bit of a mastermind and I'm not sure that whether, I mean, I'm so I'm just a little confused. Um, so some clarity would be great. Thank you. Okay, good, good. We'll, we'll do our best. Um, for some reason, the website I created 10 years ago before I was doing this was too big for words. So, um, it is very experiential and, um, also a, a container, like you talked about Holly, the three legs but um, to leave some room for it to organ organically evolve um, and what, uh -huh. what what's to emerge is so um, important and I think part of the magic of circle as well. Um, so we did talk about that and our conversation was not to have a mastermind, that people have masterminds, uh -huh. that it would be mm -hmm. um, more of a circle. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, good. All right, Thanks. well, I, I release you all into this this long weekend hopefully you have three days off to play and uh and restore and and renew yourselves because we've got big work to do right so thank you and thanks brandon for this i, I have really enjoyed the practitioner calls and what an honor to be um to be invited into this space as well so i can't wait to see what happens next be well everyone thanks everybody thank Bye. you Bye. thank you susan you're welcome Bye. Bye. Bye.